The Brennan family approached me for their son's event. He was marrying a lovely girl from Boston who he had met in New Orleans. That's a tried and true story of the ages. Everybody who moves to the city finds romance. What was unique about this request was that they wanted to have their wedding at the family property in Mississippi in a very small town by the beach, right on the beach actually, that had been in the groom's mother's family for 100 years or more and had been completely washed away in Katrina. Katrina was 12 years before this wedding was to take place and they wanted to start with this wedding and bring memories back to the property. The additional challenge with this particular space is that we had to build everything from the ground up. The clients, of course, did not want the noise of generators, so we had to bring in a transformer. We had to think about water sources. Where are we going to tie into? This property had not been touched in 12 years. Sewage was another thing, trash, storage and removal. We're really having to think through all of the things besides just the pretty stuff to make sure that the event itself, the temporary building that we're basically creating on this property, goes up and comes down. With that, we created a beautiful design plan, bringing in a tent from out of town to sort of stand in the place of where the family home had been, under the massive oak tree, the, the one that was left standing after the storm. We had the ceremony on site, at the beach front end of the property. We had graded the land, we had sodded the land. It was okay for us at the time because we had Tuesday. Well, it turned out we needed every last bit of that time. On Tuesday, once the subfloor had gone down, we were installing the tent. The tent team was wonderful, a little slower perhaps than the schedule would have allowed. And by five o'clock on Tuesday, to my surprise and to our vendor's surprise, the subcontracted team of installers clocked out and left. About 18 guys took off and left five people behind to raise the tent and we're racing against the clock. Again, this property has been washed away. There is nothing out there. There are no lights, there are no street lights. It is dark out there. The installation of the tent itself, putting these spikes into the ground, posed some issues. There had been a pool. What we didn't account for would be the concrete pilings and supports for the deck for the pool. So as we're drilling in these steel stakes, they are running into this very thick concrete and cannot get it in. So we had to pivot and move and get some water barrels in, bring those to support that side of the tent so that way we could be extra secure. But we're on schedule to start Wednesday with our lighting installation. Luminous Events comes in, that's my tried and true professionals here, to bring in their overhead lighting and some of their custom elements. We had custom bars designed for this event specifically and some other elements that work to go in on Wednesday. Right on schedule, everything is smooth sailing. Wednesday, we get notice from the weather service that there is a hurricane that is set to hit somewhere in the Gulf Coast sometime over the weekend. I wake up at 6 a.m. on Thursday to the news that not only is this hurricane certain to come to the Gulf Coast, it's most certainly going to hit pretty much right where our wedding is going to take place. I receive a phone call from the mother of the bride on Thursday, bright and early. She had let me know that their plan was to get married in a warehouse in the garden district somewhere off of the river and scrap all of the plants and location completely in a different state. The tables, chairs, and all of the rentals which were coming from New Orleans, five trucks were heading to Mississippi already on the road. And once they came off of those trucks into the tent in Mississippi, there was no getting them back. They had to stay there. With hurricanes and tropical storms, 
you definitely feel the effects of the wind and the rain well before the, the storm makes landfall. So um, it's something that will affect um, us here on Saturday night, even if the storm itself is not making landfall. The father of the groom has flown in from California for work and he is driving from the airport straight to the property. He had asked me on his drive in, what are our options? What can we do? And I said, Mr. Brennan, on Saturday, we can move up the time of the ceremony to earlier in the day. It's certainly going to rain, but we'll avoid most of the heavy winds. The worst of the winds will be later in the evening. The option to bring the ceremony inside the tent as a rain plan wasn't going to be feasible. Or, Mr. Brennan, the other thing we can do is move the wedding up a day to Friday. If we move it up an entire day, we can keep the wedding that you have planned, the wedding that your children have dreamed of, without interference from the storm. I think the decision is made. I think we have to move it to tomorrow. At noon on Thursday, with that go ahead, I call my team, we're all on the phone, we're contacting the bride and groom, and, and there's a phone tree among the families to contact all of the guests to let them know we're pivoting, we're changing, this is going to be the new date for the wedding. We needed to reroute our bus that was set to pick up our guests at the airport and get everybody straight to Mississippi, so we did just that. Our motor coaches arrived at the airport to pick up two flights of guests with their luggage, fly down the interstate to the property in Mississippi, change clothes at a friend's house, and they were in their seats in time for the wedding ceremony to start a day early. Among these guests were the bride's grandmother, who was very elderly and had flown in from Massachusetts. And she was the last guest to be put into place and the bride's mother, as we were about to walk down the aisle, came up to me in that moment, tears in her eyes, and said, I cannot thank you enough for making this happen the way that it needed to happen today, so that everybody could be here, so that my mother could be here. And you may never know what this means for our family, but thank you. I live for that. That is what makes me get out of bed in the morning. I want to make memories for a lifetime for these people that I'm working with so closely for such a long time to make these memories for their families legacies. We are not just building and tearing down interiors. What I am passionate about is living legacies. creating these things that people will talk about for the rest of their lives, the stories that will be told. The fact that we moved not just a wedding mountain in a place that didn't have any infrastructure to withstand it, we made that happen, but we moved it up an entire day, in the most perfect weather possible, so we could avoid having everything thrown away at the last minute. This is what I live for. That moment is one I'll remember forever.